Welcome back to the Degenerate Gambling Show. I'm your host, DJ Mitchell. Welcome back, Degenerates. We are going to go over the NHL and really the entire viewing experience in my lifetime. Um, I'm going to jump right into things. There's going to be some negativity. There's going to be some positivity. And I'm going to give up maybe a little bit of brief history. But as I start every show with some AI-generated garbage that happened to come upon my screen. Um, yeah, this one was a little extra weird, I felt like. <laughs> it was just like, I don't even know, man. But Single Dead paid off debt and bought house by copying bets. This one was from Jacob Picks US again. Uh, not even going to say much. It's just super freaking creepy, man. These things are really strange. I don't like them at all. Um, I get them all the time. I always see them. Like They're very obviously AI generated. And I'm waiting for one to give me something even weirder. But this one's very weird to me. I, I didn't like it at all. It made me uncomfortable uh, in general. And I'm going to move on because I want to really just rant and rave. So the NHL announced the multiverse, which we knew was coming. I mean, I knew this was a thing in the works. You know, it's going to be, it's for kids, you know, and, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to be negative. I feel like I was really angry at first because maybe it's just selfish of me to, to think that the NHL owes to their, you know, hardcore fans a better experience. Uh, maybe it's me just, again, being like, when is it going to be, you know, uh, we, we had a good idea. I made it very well known to people that I thought had, you know, that I know actually I know had a stake in that situation that I thought that this could be a little bit better, the frozen frenzy, but it had to continue. If it stopped, that was going to be the worst thing I could hear. Uh, it was a product that started slow. It definitely needed some time to get going. I won't argue with anyone about anyone that has negative things to say about it, but I felt like towards the end, it hit its stride and it was really going somewhere that I liked. People have different opinions on the broadcasters. People have had their different opinions on the the flow or, or the plan that didn't seem to be there. But again, even with any of that out of the way, I really felt like as they got to the later games and they got in a rhythm, it actually was fun. And I do think that if, even if you're negative towards, you know, it was Weeks, it was Bucci, et cetera, if you don't think they're the best commentators in the world, that's your opinion – they do well, I think, in that role of sitting down and, and dis discussing and talking about the plays. Bucheros is a very excited person, and he can deliver on very exciting things over and over again. So I do think it's a good fit for him in general. I really do. And I'm not the person that you know would often seek out his broadcasting. That's no disrespect, just how I feel. And I'm going to be honest on this channel. Why not? There's like 100 people watching Tops. So they announced the multiverse. It looks okay. It's fine. I, I really don't even care. Um, it's not for me. It's for children. And I probably should have taken a step back before making a tweet because, number one, I often will try to say things like the All-Star game. I'm not going to be negative because it's really not made for me. I don't mind watching it. I don't mind looking at the skills competition. But that's not a product that was generated for nearly 30-year-olds that are hardcore NHL fans. Um and I think it's a good event. This, this is an idea to bring in new fans. Will it do it? I don't know. Personally, I think this is going to be a thing once again, or if you do it once, it is going to go with all of the other ideas the NHL had that, I mean, we're worse than this. It's largely comic books, uh, the freaking NFT project that I don't even think is out of beta yet, but I don't think anyone had ever even touched. It's just stuff like this where I, I maybe I come at it so negative to begin with just because of the history of the NHL in general in my lifetime. So I wrote it down here, and I'm not going to give an events detail because I doubt you even really care, but from 1990 to 2005, the NHL was brought to you on ESPN. Now, around that time, right in the middle there, was really when the NHL probably hit its biggest stride, like right at the beginning of 1990, when things, I think, escalated to this is actually becoming one of the major sports uh, in America. You know, and this is all America, by the way. I'm only going to talk about America. Canada's obviously massive, and they have their deals, and it's a big deal there. There's no sense in really arguing. Um, why the deal went away in 2005? I mean, again, this is just the first, not even the first. I mean, one of just a many, many giant Gary Bettman mistakes. Now, the decision to take the money from OLN, again, the Outdoor Life, the out, yeah, Outdoor Life Network, is preposterous. I mean, I can't imagine the money was so much better 
that you were going to just completely nuke your viewership, make it difficult to find. Again, the hardcore hockey fan is going to find it. I remember at home for me, it was channel 69. I still remember that because it's funny. No one outside of that umbrella was going to find it. So Gary Bettman makes an incredibly short-sighted decision in a history of already short-sighted decisions and continued to make that in 2005. People looked at this. I read a couple articles that it was like, well, they're any is getting paid more than we thought they would here but i mean it's going to be difficult for you know fans to find games and uh you know the, the, this is a small network and it was, it was basically the nhl and pro fishing that was the network there was old runs of reruns of survivor it wasn't a popular network and in 2008 when the deal ended olm was sold to rogers and the nhl because that network that channel was bought by nbc it became versus and now nbc Technically, I feel like own the rights. And until 2000, I believe it was 11. Yeah, 2011, they had a 10-year deal in place with the NHL to go to NBC. That they could have gone anywhere. There was a lot of people that believed they were going to go to Fox at that time. And maybe there was some sort of loyalty that was congered up in those three, in those couple of years, those uh, 2008 to 2010 with Gary Bettman and NBC. I think NBC had good ideas. I think they really tried at the beginning and it just fell apart towards the end. The Versus Network never really got going. Again, it was way down the line. There was really nothing on it. And they punted off a lot of coverage down there because it wasn't a big enough product. And that is a thread that continues to plug this league is that these companies, these people, these they want to just acquire the sport of hockey in this situation and in other situations, but they don't have a plan and they never figure it out. And that is what's agonizingly frustrating about this league is that when you don't have a plan to market the game on your network and you continuously just punt it off to next year, punt it off to next year, put them on versus, it's never going to feel like a regular part of your day. People watch the NFL every single weekend, every Sunday. It is right there. It is right in front of them. It is on the same channels for like a thousand years. It's always at the same time. It's habitual. That habit takes hold and it makes the entire country watch because it's always the same. And you can't replicate that. You can't. But there are other sports that do similar things. Look at March Madness. It is chaos, like the NHL could be, and like Frozen Frenzy could be where you actually take the sport and put it into a situation at a, on a regularly time basis that shows the sport at its best. March Madness is amazing because from noon, your time, or noon Eastern until like 1 a.m. Eastern, it is staggered start times where you can just watch all day long and continuously watch the best parts of the game and, and multi-screen. It isn't that difficult to do. They act as if this schedule is impossible to move. I don't understand why. You can do this. Do it. And it's just stuff that is not even going to cost you what this multiverse is going to cost them. You have to try and put something out there and literally copy and paste an already very successful practice. Because hockey isn't what it was when it went from ESPN to OLN. It wasn't hard it's not hard to follow anymore. TVs have caught up. We can watch the game. We know what's happening. And you need to give people a reason to try the sport. If you ask anyone in your life that is not a hockey fan why they don't watch hockey, they are going to probably at some point tell you they do not understand the game very well and they cannot follow it on TV. You have to find a way to allow them to. And I think that this Frozen Frenzy was the first time I felt like this is how they can follow it. This is how they can get involved with it. Now, of course, I would love to look at it from a betting perspective as well, where you could actually cater to the game in a lot better of a capacity. Because right now, it's another one of those things with no real plan. You just have the betting as a complete sideshow. And in reality, it's almost just a negative because number one, there's no real advice being given. There's no explanation. And people are just annoyed by it. And even better is like myself, just look at it like, why are we putting this up here? Number one, it's not even correct most of the time because it's moving so quickly. Number two, 
it's not actionable because you're giving us nothing to like, it's like if you had it staggered if you had these games coming off at, at these intervals at a march madness type of a level where every let's per se half hour uh maybe the time it takes normally between a period to exist you could actually be giving advice in the commercial breaks you could be putting together again this just takes very basic planning i mean i'm doing a 12 minute video and i'm coming up with a very easy outline it's not that hard and i think that's what's so frustrating is it's like for decades we get bounced around network to network no plan take the money where you can take it until now where we get the espn and i actually believe that there is a vision that could come through but this company this parent company espn turner it's just too big they don't care about it. They acquired. They have it. The people care. I do think the people care. The people at ESPN, the people that are actually on the broadcast and doing the work. I think there's a lot of hardcore hockey fans that want this that this to succeed in a very big way. You can feel it. I buy that for sure. But there's just been no strategy. Again, I haven't seen any reason to believe that things are going to get better for this league. The betting has been... I mean, it started okay, and it's gone off the cliff. I mean, I recently listened to Greg Wojcinski talking about how he used to, you know, be on the daily wager and give some betting, and then it just kind of fell apart because he didn't really feel passionate about it. I mean, that's more or less the genesis of it. He was doing it because it was part of the, you know, but but they don't want to hire anyone to do it. And if they do, it's going to be someone that, you know, frankly, I don't believe will know what they're talking about. That's my opinion. I'd love to be true and wrong, be proven wrong by whoever gets on there, or whoever wants to talk about it. And even if you have people like Butchagross, like Bizanet on TNT, you know, um, with again eventually this merger that's going to go through next year, where a lot of these networks are going to come together, you don't even need them to give good advice. You just need to make it actionable. You need to say tonight, Paul Bizanet is betting this because of something stupid, and we're going to boost the other side. Just have fun. Just do something interesting. It doesn't have to even be about betting. You just have to take this product that, again, has bounced around more than any other sport and actually give us a plan for once. This is something. This multiverse thing is something. It is a thing, and parents are excited about it as far as the media is concerned. They, they are excited to watch it with their kids. If it happens one time and we never see it again, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. It's not even that I think it's a good idea. I don't. I, I mean, again, it's not for me, though. So I'm going to back off. And I'll, you know, I shouldn't have probably been so negative about it. it. It cannot be one and done. It can't. We can't do this every time with everything. It's always one and done with the NHL. It's always just a, this is something we're going to try. And I think Frozen Frenzy was successful personally. And I think it could have been better. Never see it again. If I never see it again, again, I'm heartbroken. I want a plan. I want consistency. That's it. You have to give people a reason to watch. And then once you give them that reason, you have to continue it. And they just don't. I mean, I really, I just, again, I get so frustrated with this league because it's directionless. It is a dog chasing cars and they very rarely catch one. And when they do, they just they just let it go. They can't do anything with it. What is it going to do? What is the dog going to do when it finally catches the car? It just gets hit, basically. It's just, it's just so frustrating. I just get so angry. But that's really it. I'll probably cut it around here. I think that ESPN needs to do something. And now, and it's not going to happen, I just, I want it to, I want Frozen Frenzy back. I want the playoffs maybe give us a chance at a March Madness feel. You have to try something at some point and make it regular and do it on this day at this time. You can wait till football ends. Do it every Saturday. You can even have commercials still if that is the stumbling block of making money. It just has to happen. So I'm going to sign out. Thank you for listening to me ramble for 15 minutes if you got through it. I'd love to hear your comments below. Uh, do the like and subscribe thing. I definitely am passionate about the league and I want it to be great. And I would love to hear what you have to think as well. So yeah, do all of the engagement stuff that you should do because um, it probably will help me go from making $0 to zero, but we'll talk soon.